my darlings, this is Mrs. Welch for the Chester Andover Elementary School Library, and I have some brand new books to share with you, and some of them are about school, including this one, The World's Best Class Plant, by Lynn Garten, I'm sorry, Liz Garten Scanlon and Audrey Vernick, illustrated by Lenore Bontiago. The world's best class plant. Room 107 has a cockatiel. Room 108 has a chinchilla. Even the art room has a bearded dragon. But in room 109, Arlo's classroom, there is a plant. A mostly green, hardly growing, never moving plant. Instead of doing fun class pet stuff, shredding the newspaper bedding, filling the food bowl, cradling the creature carefully and passing it around their morning circle, Arlo's class takes turn watering. Sometimes they forget because it doesn't squeak or whistle or whimper. It's just a plant. Mr. Boring not his real name, says the plant is more than enough excitement for us. Arlo thinks Mr. Boring doesn't know what excitement means because this plant is about as exciting as a thumbtack or cornflakes or the sidewalk. Arlo wishes it was exciting. He wishes room 109 had a silly but trusty companion instead of a blob of, in a plastic, plot, plastic pot in the windowsill. He wishes for someone to hold and whisper and, seek and whisper secrets of love to. One morning, Arlo raises his hand and announces, we should name our plant. Yes, viscous vine noodle, says Miriam. Francisco the fourth, says Sylvie. The green lobster. Otis barely gets his sensation su suggestion out before Mr. Bummer, not his real name, says, what about Jerry? Arlo opens his mouth to protest, but when he looks at the plant, he realizes that Mr. Bummer is right. The plant is Jerry. Everyone agrees. Something about naming the blob makes it more exciting. All of room 109 rushes over to sing Jerry's praises and add jobs to the chore chart. Bring Jerry home for the weekend. Sweep up dropped leaves. Turn Jerry towards the light. As the days pass, strange things happen. Jerry gets greener and longer and twistier. In fact, Jerry gets so green and so long and twisty that he outgrows his plastic pot. Kids come to school bursting with the stuff they've learned. Like it turns out, Jerry is a spider plant. And if you water him too much, you can kill him. And this is unbelievable. Jerry makes little baby Jerry's. They're called spiderettes. You can cut them off and they'll turn into whole new plants. Don't try that with a cockatiel or a chinchilla. One morning, when it's Arlo's turn to do the misting, he's pretty sure he hears Jerry breathe. Not breathe, more like whisper. I know, Jerry, Arlo whispers back. Everybody likes feeling special. When room 109 asks if they can have a Jerry Appreciation Day, Mr. Patient, not his real name, says yes. Talk about exciting. They plan leafy costumes, green snacks, and watering can races. Word spreads, of course. The kids from room 107 asked to trade their cockatiel for Jerry. No way. Room 108 wants their chinchilla to meet Jerry. What if the chinchilla eats Jerry? No way. Everyone wants to come to Jerry Appreciation Day. Everyone should get to know Jerry, says Mia. 
with his fine green leaves and his surprising twists, said Sylvia and Lavar. And just his, Arlo reaches his arms out wide. There are no words to express the greatness of Jerry. So Jerry Appreciation Day goes school wide. And you can see that they've got some exhibits and pot painting and snacks. I love the costume contest. It's glorious and spectacular and joyous, but wow, the kids in room 109 are whooped by the end of the day. Jerry is really as much excitement as they can handle. They're relieved when everyone goes back to their classrooms and they have Jerry to themselves again. For the rest of the year, they missed and fluff and turn and love their class plant. Then on the last day of school, when it's time to say goodbye to Jerry, Mr. Perfect, should be his real name, says, you each get to bring home a baby Jerry of your very own. When Arlo's next year teacher, Ms. No Nonsense, not her real name, offers up a, a rock as the class pet. Arla remembers how Jerry used to be a mostly green, hardly growing, never moving plant before Mr. Smart, actually that's his real name, let them name him. So Arlo picks up the rock and examines it closely. He turns it over and feels the weight of it in his hands. He really gets to know it before whispering gently, Brenda, is that you? And then back here we have some information about plants. This has been Mrs. Welch from the Chester Andover Library. We'll see you soon.